Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for December 7th, 2015. All right, let's talk about overcoming impatience. It's easy to take trades that are good, but not necessarily great because of impatience. The problem is that these marginal trades tend to drag down our performance. When the market gets slow, it's tempting to swing for the fences, go for the big trades, because we're trying to make up for lost time. We end up taking on more risk with the hope of bigger profits and ultimately our trading plans fall apart. Trading well is not about hitting home runs, it's about making base hits, consistently grinding out profits. You will make more by trading less. One of the keys to overcoming impatience is to realize that the market is always giving you new opportunities. They just don't happen minute by minute. You have to wait, they'll come in clumps, and then the next bunch of time, it'll be really slow, and then they come really fast again, and you just have to have the patience to wait for the market to give you the opportunities that fit your trading plan. All right, here's a chart of the S&P 500, and a pretty crazy end to the week. We had big volatility to the downside, then a big snapback to the upside, and that really demonstrates that investors are very uncertain about what this market is going to do with the Fed possibly raising interest rates in December. Now on this weekly chart, you can see we have a situation where the market basically closed where it opened for the week, and yet there was a lot of volatility during the week. That shows indecision. We're battling against resistance at the red line, and we're dealing with this notion that interest rates may soon go up. So on one hand, you've got a market that could go down because interest rates are going to rise, and then on the other hand, you've really got no alternatives for all that capital that's floating around in the world and it just generally wants to come into the U.S. market, even if it doesn't make sense that it wants to go into the U.S. market in a rising interest rate environment. Where else does the money go? So those are the two competing forces in the market. We'll see how it pans out. Probably next week, more volatility. The Russell 2000, the small caps, also had a fair bit of volatility this week, but this chart is more of a flag pattern. It's trending slightly higher, but really, if you look at it since 2014, this market has gone nowhere, and I don't think it will start to move until the desire to own those large cap stocks because of low interest rates goes away. And uh, it's you know been a dead place, and you have to be very patient trading the small caps right now. The TSX 60, again, this is the intraday chart showing that volatility with oil testing new lows, that was a drag on the Canadian market, but we also saw some resurgence in gold, which helps some of the miners listed on the Canadian market. I would call this a neutral chart in the short term, but in the long term, we still remain in a bearish trend. The tops are falling, the trend line is intact. However, we are trying to stabilize. And so the key question is, which line do we break first? The red line, which is the downward trend line, or the green line of support? TSX Venture at the lows, much like the oil and gas chart, this really follows the commodity sector and you can see it testing those lows from uh, middle of August, late August. We need to see that downward trend line broken, but the long-term outlook for this is still very negative, although it is trying to stabilize. Treasuries were up and down all over the place this week, again, because of that speculation that the Fed may raise interest rates, but big picture, it really didn't do anything this week it sort of closed where it started the week. And so that shows the indecision. All that volatility shows uncertainty. US dollar, interesting chart because it broke its upward trend in the short term anyway, from a falling top. I've highlighted the falling top in red. Pretty dramatic sell-off when the European Union, uh, central, the European Central Bank chose to lower interest rates, but not as much as people had expected or hoped. A lot of people were caught on the wrong side of the trade. That had a massive rush for the exit door on the U.S. dollar and a run into the euro, mostly for trading reasons. I don't know if the fundamentals really warranted the move that we saw, but when people are in a crowded trade and everybody runs for the exit door at the same time, you get that dramatic price move. So the long-term trend is still intact on the U.S. dollar, but the short-term trend has been broken, and I would say confidence been rattled a little bit. Weakness in the U.S. dollar helps commodities. It didn't help oil because oil is really focused on what was happening with OPEC, but it did help gold. We saw a little bit of a rally in gold, particularly on Friday. And in the short term, I think gold is tradable. If you are a swing trader, if you have the time to move in and out, 
out of uh, positions in the gold miners within a couple of days, yeah, it's a good time to play gold. But if you're thinking big picture, longer term trend, we're still in a downward trend on gold. And so I would caution you long term on the heavy gold stuff. Oil testing the lows, the all time, well, not the all time lows, but the the local lows anyway, we had that uh, low set in August and we're getting close to that. Again, West Texas Intermediate was actually lower and testing those lows below $40 this week. You know, the supply of oil is the big issue. There's just so much supply still in the market and OPEC chose to do nothing on supply and that is weighing on oil. Finally, the VIX, we had a pop up to the downward trend line and then the next day we had a pop down. Again, showing the uncertainty I think for fear to really get some momentum, we've got to break the downward trend line on this VIX chart, but we could also break through support if the market then breaks out to new highs. So this is a good one to watch because it's a lot of fun to trade it when there is that volatility, this and the opposite being the XIV, but you have to be pretty, well, you have to be very short term. I mean, I day trade it, you can maybe swing trade it, but anything longer than that isn't really appropriate until we start to trend on it. We're just bouncing around in a range. So US stocks, I've got a neutral rating in both time frames. Canadian bearish long term, neutral short term. Gold still bearish in both time frames. You could probably consider it somewhat bullish in the short term time frame because it is trying to make a little rally. It had a one day uh, good rally on Friday. Oil bearish on both time frames. We've seen whipsaw volatility and that really shows how uncertain investors are as the market anticipates a US interest rate hike. A good environment for the short term trader but it's pretty difficult for the longer term traders because of the abnormal but trendless volatility. You get whipsawed out of positions very easily. Gold tradable in the short term and oil is testing the lows. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for December 6th, 7th, 2015. Have a great week in the market and trade well.